Hello fellow foodies, this video is all about how to start a food YouTube channel in 2021. I think there's a lot of people trying to do this right now. I'm six months in and I'm going to share my personal experiences of how I think you can best do this. I'm going to talk through my personal experiences of how I started my food YouTube channel. I'm going to talk about budget, equipment, how to get started, what sort of concept is best for your channel. I'm going to go through it all and make sure you stick right until the end because I'm going to give newer YouTubers a great opportunity to launch your channel and to make sure you're doing everything you can to get success. It would be amazing if you could hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe for fantastic new foodie content every week. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so here we are, 2021. Happy New Year to all of you, by the way. And I really appreciate the support that all of you guys have given me in my channel. I've been going six months now. It's been a really interesting journey, and I think I've learned a lot. And I just wanted to share the first six months and how that has been for me. And I wanted to greatly encourage new YouTubers which are potentially interested in starting their channel. So first off, why on earth would you want to start your food YouTube channel in 2021? You know, I think it's a great challenge. And for me personally, I started um, as a form of passive income. I, um, I, I kind of work in the food industry anyway. I have a sales job uh, for a artisan chocolate company, which I really love. You also need to think about other revenue streams. And for me, I just wanted to start YouTube as a form of passive income. And if I'm really honest, when I, you know, when I started, I didn't, I really didn't know what I was doing, knowing how to do things, knowing how to record something and make food look good. Also, presentation skills coming over in the right way. So I think in, in that aspect, it's, it's really good for self-development. And I've, re I've really enjoyed that. I've learned a heck of a lot. I mean, so much. I've obviously learned how to cook more. And I think it pushes you as a cook because you have your you know your kind of comfort dishes the things which you will typically cook but then it's important just to broaden your horizons a little bit and try different cuisines try different you know foods and stuff you've never made before bread uh, you know I, I never i never used to make bread i used to be quite nervous of the idea of making bread but now i've made quite a bit of bread which i enjoy pasta as well if you can make bread I think pasta is a lot easier because it needs far less kneading. I think another fantastic thing about YouTube is the community it has. I think it's absolutely phenomenal how you can have your channel and you can interact, you can communicate with other, other channels, other creators. And it's such a proud feeling to have your, your channel, your kind of niche and your identity and you're kind of pushing that out there and you're interacting with other people. So as well as being a really good cook and learning all of those skills, because there's, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, you need to know stuff about cameras, you need to know stuff about light, you need to know about sound. I think audio is really important. It's probably taken me six months to understand audio and to understand sound a little bit more. The thing, the thing that really attracted me and the thing which keeps me motivated and inspired as the end goal is getting monetized and getting YouTube ad revenue. And there's a bunch of ways you can create money from YouTube. I really enjoy it. I really love it all. I think, I think it's hard work, and and that and that kind of that kind of takes me on to the, you know, the cons and you know the hard the, the harder stuff. And I think you do need to invest quite a bit of time, and it's not just about creating that content. It's about interacting. So at the start of every day, I spend half an hour to an hour going on other people's channels, commenting, interacting, and that's really important to grow your channel. I guess when you're tiny, when you're so small and you have a hundred, you know, subscribers, whatever, um, the sort of probably the best way of growing your audience is to create that community and create that presence with other food YouTubers because you haven't been discovered yet, you haven't had your your viral video. So it takes it takes time, it takes time, and you need to be patient. So when I got started, I was thinking of a concept, and my original concept was reviewing artisan food products kind of close to me, reviewing them, tasting them, talking about them, and then cooking with them. So I was trying to amalgamate the kind of 
food reviews, the big food reviews you have on YouTube and that kind of classical cooking YouTube video. I was trying to sort of put the two together. Looking back now, I think it's an interest that I had, not necessarily what people are searching for, not what people want, but that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned in my so I could, you know, kind of six months in doing it, it's about producing content which is going to be searched heavily, what people are going to be interested in. And that's easier said than done. You've got to do stuff that you enjoy as well, so it's probably finding that balance there. There is so much work that goes into it, and I think you're, you know, you're learning all, all of the time. And it's only now that I think my quality is starting to get there. When I used to, you know, like my first videos, I. You know, at the time, I, th I thought I thought it was quite quite good quality. I thought it was quite good, but looking back now, I, you know, I think I'm kind of cringing and I'm thinking, oh, it's not it's not quite as good as I thought it was. Um, it sucked a little bit, but that that's part of the that's part of the journey. So once you have a strong concept and you know where you want to go with it, you need to think about your equipment. I've got a Nikon D3300, which uh, is a camera I've had about four or five years. I haven't really used it much, I've just used it for holiday snaps and, and, and things, but I'm now you sort of using it as my sort of primary camera with, with the YouTube videos. Also lighting, after about 10, 12 videos, I got myself some lights. I just bought them from Amazon. I've also got a Rode shotgun mic, the Video Mic Pro. This is a really good microphone, as I've discovered using it in bigger kind of areas um, where, where there's more more air and more things for the sound to bounce off. Um, it's you know, probably going to get quite a bit of reverb, there's going to be a lot of echo. And that's something I've recently discovered and, and I reached out to somebody who does a lot of audio work and a lot of uh, work with DaVinci Resolve, which is the program that I use. And he was, he was really, really helpful, Jay, and he, he kind of gave me some tips. And I, it was under his personal, personal recommendation that I've got this lab mic and I believe that this will help my audio quality. I've now got a secondary camera. I use a Olympus o OMD, I think, I think I've said that right. So I've got, so I've got a couple of tripods, I've got my um, computer, which I bought about a month ago. I originally was gonna go for a Mac, but um, my, my partner's brother knows a thing or two about computers and he kind of recommended this, uh, this tower kind of set up a lot cheaper. So, you know, all in all, I've probably spent about 12, 1300 British pounds on all of this stuff, but that's including the computer. If you take the computer out of it, maybe it's three, three, 400 British pounds. So it's not, it's not too, too expensive. The other thing you need to think about is the editing software. I used OpenShot. That was one of the free programs that I initially started to use. I think that it was a really good introductory editing software program to use. Looking back, I, I think I think there's issues with the audio because there was a slight slight crackling sound. And I didn't I didn't really understand it at the time, but looking back, I think uh, yeah the you know the audio isn't so good. But now I'm using DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 17. This is a fantastic program, totally free of charge, and I'd strongly recommend you using this program. Also, you've got to think about music as well. YouTube have um, loads of free tracks you can get, which which is good. I don't think um, the audio is quite as strong as, as when you pay for it, but there are some subscription services, some paid services, which I'm now, now looking into getting as well. You just need to focus on one thing at a time and that kind of constant improvement, that continuous improvement mindset is so important. That's how I am anyway. And I look at something, I think, how you know how I can improve it. Currently, I'm sitting on about 624 subscribers. I've got about 10,000 hours of watch time. Looking back, do I wish that I have more subscribers, more watch time? Yes, of course, but I think it takes a long time to understand YouTube and understand the algorithm a little bit more. It's a very complex subject. I think there's just so many different subjects which you need to know a bit about, and that takes time. Having social media platforms, I have my Instagram, I'm now signing up to TikTok. I've now um, signed up to a food YouTuber's Facebook Facebook group, which was introduced to me by, by Karen, which is a fantastic food YouTuber. Definitely say, check out her, her channel. There's another guy called Ryan Turley, which I'm in touch with, that's kind of given me some hint, hints and tips. And it's really humbling the fantastic people out there that are kind of supporting you and helping you. And there's been, there's been loads of people 
people like Chris the Butcher. I only had 60 subscribers and he said, oh, you're, you know, your channel's great. You're doing a really good job. Shout out on his channel. Also Pete Thomas, a really, really lovely, really kind guy. He did an interview with me on his channel, which was fantastic. And, you know, he just interviewed me about YouTube and everything about, about what I'm up to. There are some really amazing people, really, really lovely people on YouTube. And I feel really grateful to be a part of it. So if you're a food YouTuber or you're thinking about YouTube, I'd love to know what you think. Please drop a comment below. Tell me what you've learned. Tell me what's been the most important thing of your time on YouTube so far. I want to release this video to inspire food creators, to inspire food YouTubers, because I've really loved and appreciated the journey so far. I think YouTube is a fantastic community and it's a really great thing to be part of. So please drop a comment. Let me know the most important thing that you've learned on YouTube so far. And for all of those potential food YouTubers that are thinking about starting their own channel, I want to offer some support because I personally know it's not the easiest thing to get the ball rolling and it just takes a little bit of time and it takes a lot of time to acquire the knowledge you need to have a really successful YouTube channel. So please drop me an email. My email is thefoodiekitchenreview at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to help anybody, and I mean anybody, that is thinking about starting their own food YouTube channel. Or if you're quite new to YouTube and you need any tips, any guidance, please get in touch with me comment below or you can drop me an email and I'll be more than happy just to get back in touch with you and offer some support and guidance. So it's six months in, it's been a lot of hard work, a lot of learning and a lot of mistakes, but it's been a really fantastic time. And I just want to thank everyone, everyone that's ever watched my videos, anybody that's ever subscribed. I greatly appreciate your fantastic support. 2021, I've decided it's gonna be a really big year for me. I've got some exciting new dishes that I'm going to be posting in the next few weeks. Healthier alternatives for a healthier new year. So please stay connected. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And take care. See you later, fellow foodies.